Today's throwback. Preview project pricing and politics of portable water in colonial Lagos, part one. Native Lagos Islanders of the colonial era from the 1860s to the 1930s, especially during the colorful reign of the beloved Oba Ishuba Yeleko, when the politics of water articulation and tariff degenerated into nasty politicking, like their hydrophilic Awori, Mahi, Ijebu, and Edo ancestors never thought they had drinking water problem. After all, they were not only surrounded by water, but could easily reach the waterbed with lightly dug wells. However, during the era of the colonial governor, Sir John Glover, after whom the famous Glover Hall of Broad Street was named, he made sure that better wells were dug in the European quarters between 1862 and 1864 to pacify the concerns of the medical director or surgeon of the colony, who did not only recommend stringent conditions for the way the wells must be sunk, but at a point recommended the migration of Europeans and, co and the more enlightened and educated natives, unquote, to, quote, a more healthy site on the mainland where good water can be obtained and where proper drainage could be instituted." Unquote. After decades of palliatives in well digging under different colonial governors and dithering on the implementation of reticulation project due to cost, particularly the prohibitive amount to pipe water to Lagos Island from Ekpaya and Ekorodu that were initially considered but dropped because of the large bodies of water to pipe water through, and, quote, following the unsuccessful attempts to find suitable sources of water in the places where the Europeans lived, like the Koyi Plain and Apapa, the mainland became the inevitable alternative. And the most appropriate site was the Jew to the north of Lagos. The Jew water works were located some 1,000 feet below the confluence of the Adinyan River and the Jew Stream. The government acquired and fenced an area of 151 acres of land, river, and swamp surrounding the waterworks on a 999-year lease. The area was originally sparsely populated and there were only a few farms. Remember from our past editions that it was around this body of water at the New River that James Pinson Labula Davis organized the first cocoa plantation on mainland West Africa when he brought the cocoa seed into Nigeria, indeed West Africa, from Brazil via the island of Fernando Po. The inhabitants were prohibited from washing or bathing in the rivers and the least area was patrolled by the colonial police. The waterworks were completed in 1910 and formally commissioned on 1 July 1915 by the then Nigeria's Governor General, Sir Frederick Lugard. This two-part edition will be concluded tomorrow with the brief history of how the pricing of pipe bomb water factionalized 1930s Lagos on the basis of beliefs, the Begi Bebo, and the educational status of the elites the pro eleko largely uneducated but rich Lagosians of the Ilu Committee, supported by Abad Macaulay, and the majority of educated natives who supported the colonial government. And that's it on the show tonight. I am Gola Oba.